Hi, this is Comp 1010 at the University of Manitoba. I'm Dr. Celine Latulip, and today I'll be talking to you about variables in processing. So we need places to store data to use while we're running our programs because we have to manipulate data to do anything interesting. A variable is what we use to store data. And you can think of it as a small piece of memory in the computer or a box. I tend to like to think of variables as boxes because you can put things in and then you can take stuff out and put other things in. And so you can change what's inside the box, but the size of the box is sort of static. It's constant. All right. So when we have variables, we have a name for that variable so that we can get to it and figure out what's in it. We have um, a type of data that it can hold. So you can think of that as the, what's the shape of this box? What can it hold? And then whatever's in the box, which is the value. So here's two examples. There's the first one is the name is first name. That's the identifier. It's a string type variable. So the only thing that can go in this box is strings, series of characters. And the value that's in this box right now is Medea. And that's, you know, just a set of letters. The example on the right is age on January 1, and that is an int uh, variable. So it stores a number, an integer or whole number, and the number, the value that it has right now is 29. So we can change the value of variables. So in this case, we've changed what's in the first name box, and now it has Ahmed in it and we've changed the age on Jan 1 box, and now it has 73 in it. But the names of these boxes and the type of value that they can hold doesn't change. So if we wanted to give it a different name, we'd actually have to just get rid of this box entirely and create a new one. All right, so how do we create these boxes when we're programming and processing? There's sort of two different ways. The first way is you just create an empty box. And in this case, we just type the, um, we use the type, the data type, and then whatever name we want to give it. So here's two examples, int knows x. So that says, give us a box in memory that can hold integers or whole numbers and call it knows x, but don't put anything in it yet. And this other example says string output. So that says, give us a box in memory to hold strings and call it output, but don't put anything in it yet. So that looks like this. There's another way of doing this where we can create the box of memory and put something in it all at once. And that looks like this. So here we say int knows x equals 40. And this says, give us a box of memory that can hold integers, call it knows x, and put the value 40 in it to begin with. And similarly here, but we're putting the value hello world in the output box. So that looks like this. Now you may wonder, why would you bother creating variables without putting a value in it? And sometimes we want to declare the variables and create those boxes and memories ahead of time because we're later on going to calculate some value to put inside the boxes and we don't know it yet when we ask for the boxes to be created. So you could later on come back and say, hey, you know that box knows x? Put the value 40 in it. Or hey, you know that variable that's called output? Now put the value hello world in it. And so that's how you would do this at a later stage in your program. So these are sort of two different approaches to creating boxes of memory and having values put in them. Once we've got boxes in memory with values in them, we can actually use those. And this is really handy. So here's an example, small processing script where we set the size of the canvas to 500 by 500 pixels. We create a variable that holds integers, it's called x, and it holds the value 200. And then we go and draw an ellipse and we say, let's make the ellipse centered at 200, 200. So what this line does is it says, oh, here's a variable name. Let's go find that variable and get the value from it. And so you can think of the Java or the processing compiler coming to this line of code and saying, okay, I need to go and get those values and substitute them. So, um, there's one really important thing to know, and that is that you have to declare the variable and put a value in it before you can use the variable. So this case here, we create the canvas, and then we go to draw an ellipse and we're calling xx, but we haven't yet created a variable x. And so the 
processing will get to this line and try to do it and it'll try to go and find x and it won't be able to find x because processing executes lines in order top to bottom so no x exists here so even though on the very next line we've created the variable x that won't work similarly even if we um, just create the box if we haven't put values in it before we try to use it that will cause a problem so here we've created our canvas here we create the int x box to hold a value and then we go to use it and in this case the processing compiler will come create the, the canvas create the box in memory and then come down here and it'll go to the box in memory but there won't be anything in it and so this will also cause an error so we don't want to do this even though we've, we've put a value in later, that just doesn't work. We've got to put a value in before we try to use the variable. All right, so when you're creating variables, there's some rules you need to know about the names you can give to a variable. So names can basically contain letters and numbers, so capital letters, small letters, and an underscore. That's sort of the only special character that's allowed. Other special characters like a number sign or ampersand or percent sign hashtag, those things should not be in variables. Um, and one other rule is that variables can't start with a number because processing will try to read that as a numeric thing, as, a, as an integer, and we don't want that. Um, and of course, as with everything in processing, uh, variable names or identifiers are case sensitive. So if you create a variable name called face edge, and then you type this later, processing will not know that by typing this, you've actually meant this. You've got to type it exactly the same. So here's some valid examples of variables. You can call a variable I, or sum, or my program, or max value, or code three, four, green. Those will all work. They're not necessarily good style, but they will work. These ones are not valid. So processing will not let you call a variable this. So third box, because it's got a number at the front, account number because it's got this special symbol, robot face because it has a space in it. You're not allowed to have a space in a variable name. And umanitoba.ca because it's got a period in it and that's a special character that you can't put into variable names. Okay, so there's what's allowed and then there's appropriate style. Um, so one more thing that's about allowed, which is that you have to remember that there's reserved words in processing or Java. Those are special keywords that mean something special when you're programming and you can't use those as variable names. So for example, size, um, which sets the size of the canvas or line, which draws a line. If you create a variable named line, that's going to cause a lot of problems. Um, the style or standard convention for variables is to use what we call camel case. And in camel case, we might use multiple words and squish them together. And the second, third, and fourth, all the later words, we capitalize the first letter. So it looks like it's got a hump like a camel. So face size is a correct, uh, it follows the convention. Face size where we've capitalized the first letter or face size where we capitalized all of them is not correct. Those don't follow the convention that we typically use for naming variables. So while these are allowed, um, they're considered valid, they're not considered the right style for programming and they might confuse other people. So here's another example, My Little Pony. This has three words squished together, but again, we're only capitalizing the second and third letters and we're not doing any of these types of things. So again, these would all be allowed, but they're not considered the right style. The last thing to know when you're choosing variable names is to choose things that are meaningful, but also be reasonable about it. So there are some names that are bad, like just naming your variables A, B, C, X, and Y, typically those aren't very good names. X and Y are okay if you are talking about screen coordinates, but usually we wanna actually give a little bit more information, like what are we using the coordinates for? So good examples like ball X, ball Y. So now we're, we're using screen coordinates, but we're saying what these coordinates are going to specify. That's where the ball is. Um, and so this face left edge, that's a good name. That's a, a, a descriptor of where we're going to put the left edge of the face. But then you can go overboard. Left edge of the robot's face. That's just like too many words. And you're gonna get really tired if you have to type all that out every time you wanna use that variable. You can also declare multiple variables all at once just to sort of save yourself um, some lines of code. 
So here's an example where we're declaring two variables and putting values in them. Head height equals 400, and we separate it with a comma, oops, and then head width equals 200, and then we have the semicolon. So these are both on the same line. We only specify the type once because this type applies to both of these. So you couldn't specify two variables all at once that were different types. Um, here we have int x1, x2, x3, y1, y2, y3. So in this case, we're specifying a whole bunch of variables. These are creating empty boxes in memory, but we're not putting any values. There's no assignment happening here. Those, these are empty boxes. All right, I wanna revisit the size command. Um, so the size command should always be the first command you use in your processing script because setting up the size of the, of the canvas is really critical. But what you need to know is that once you've created the size command and put in some numbers, say we send in 300 and 500, that's the size of the canvas, two reserved variables are automatically created in memory. So there's this variable in memory called width, which holds an int value. There's a variable in memory called height, which holds an int value. And when you call size, these get the numbers that you've specified put in them. And then later on in your program, you can use these values. So you can call width and you can call height and you can make your drawings relative to the size of the canvas. And this is really important because then if you say, oh wait, I actually wanted a much bigger canvas, you could come back and change these numbers. And if all of your drawings are sort of dependent on the width and height variables, then making your canvas size different, your drawing will automatically scale to it. And that's really great. So assignment statements are important. You're going to see many, many of these. And this is the way that you actually get new values into a variable. So assignment statements basically say, take what's on the right-hand side and put it into the variable that's on the left-hand side of the equals sign. Right? So it doesn't mean, are they equal? This is not a test, it's not an equation. It is basically just saying, in this case, knows x is assigned the value 30, or knows x is changed to 30, or knows x is set equal to 30. So you have to be careful that you're not thinking about this as a mathematical equation, right? So if we had knows x as 40, and then we ran this line of code here, it would basically replace what was already in there. So you can also have expressions that get calculated and then assigned. So imagine again, we have int knows x is 30, and then we have a line of code that looks like this, knows x equals width divided by 10. So this is sort of a mathematical expression. And what we do is we go and we find out what width is from the canvas size. If width was 150, we put that in there, 150 divided by 10 is 15. So we evaluate this expression we figure out what it equals to, and then we assign that into knows x, okay? So that's what you need to know sort of about assignment statements. So here's some more examples. In this case, we are going to store x in, or we are going to store three in the variable x. We're gonna store 15 in the variable y. And now we might have an expression that actually uses other variables. So for, z we want to grab what's in x which is three so three plus two so this is five and then we want to grab what's in y which is 15 so now we're going to do five times 15 and so that equals 75 so now this is evaluates to 75 and we're going to put 75 into the variable z okay one thing to know, a, a terminology thing, is the, uh, the concept of literals. So when we just hard code in a number in our programming, that's called using a literal. These are literals. So three is a literal, 15 is a literal. And in here, in this expression, we've got some variables, but we also have the literal value too. And you just, you might hear people talk about literals and that's what they mean, is actually typing an actual digit into the program rather than pulling it from some other variable. The last thing that you need to make sure you don't get confused about with variables is to know that data is copied when we're doing assignments. So just to sort of show you this, here we have int A and int B, so we create these two boxes in memory, and then we say A equals 20, and so we put 20 into this box, 
And then this next line says B equals A. And you might think that that means we're sort of creating a link and so B is always gonna be exactly whatever A is, but that's not the case. This assignment just says copy what's in A right now into B. And so B gets 20. And then at the next line of code, we say let's set A to 30. Well, A changes to 30, B does not change. So B is not sort of perpetually linked to B whatever the A is. It just got a, a value from A in this one line. And so B will stay as the value 20. And sometimes that can cause confusion, but this does not mean that we're linking those variables to be the same forever. It just means we're copying a value. All right, so that's it for variables. I hope that was helpful and I'll see you next time.